Hello and welcome back everybody. Dan John here from danjohnuniversity.com. This is episode 121 of our podcast and we, things are going well and I'm, I'm glad to see everyone keep coming back each and every week. As you know, I do my best to answer every question. And if you do have questions, remember podcast at danjohnuniversity.com and I'm always happy to answer your questions. Short reminder is that we have gift certificates available at the site. And, you know, it's nice that the, the gift of, of health and fitness and maybe longevity is, is something very nice. I'll be honest, one of the reasons I work out is because I want to be around for not only, you know, Danny and Josephine, who are, you know, in grammar school, elementary school, but also for Leo, who's just, you know, a newborn. And uh, I think one of the best things I can do to ensure that I'm around uh, is to... To exercise every day and go for walks and eat right and do all the things you're supposed to do. And if if danjohnuniversity.com can be of assistance to you, well, that is a blessing beyond the grave. So thank you so much. And uh, let's get on with today's questions. Oh, we have a question from Andrew. People say kettlebells are great for combining strength training and conditioning. Yeah, I would say it's true. I, 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 it is a, a, a unique tool. Of course, you know, Really, if you wanted to and you really had enough thought, uh, you would say that certainly about the dumbbell because, you know, you can do all those high rep complexes uh, with the barbell. You can do complexes so you can get a lot of work done. Of course, you also can come Olympic lift and power lift. Um, there are pieces of equipment, Andrew. I'm just riffing here, so don't. <laughs> I will get your question. Uh, but even something like I love the ab wheel and it's only really good for one thing, and that would be the that ab wheel rollout. But almost every piece of equipment you could argue are good for strength training and conditioning, you know, if you think hard enough and, you know, work hard enough on it. As a thought exercise, well, that's what I need. I need to exercise my thoughts. How would I use kettlebells for what they are not great for? Well, the biggest thing would be um, the heavy hinge, the heavy squat. Even from for a lot of stronger people, the heavy press family. Um, so the, the power lifting moves, the Olympic lifting moves, those big whole body movements. Uh, now it's interesting because the kettlebell snatch and the kettlebell swing are whole body movements. But, you know, it's more the conditioning side where, you know, like with the 10,000 swing challenge with the, I mean, the kettlebell is only 24 kilos, 53 pounds. You know, you do that over 20 days and good things happen where, you know, it might be hard to deadlift 600 pounds, you know. 20 straight days. Um, so I would say that. I would say they're not real good for maximal weightlifting. If I wanted to use kettlebells to train strength but not conditioning, what would my training program look like? Well, you would have to find variations uh, because very quickly with your kettlebells, like for overhead presses, you're going to just run out of load. Um, but doing the half kneeling single arm, so one knee on the ground, uh, one arm uh overhead press man i find that to be a fabulous strength move even with light belts like the 24s and the 28s i mean you you can get some real progress um but not conditioning uh the double kettlebell front squat uh really is an interesting exercise because it really does demand so much of what i call anaconda strength that uh, that you know like you're wrapped up like a mummy but you wrap yourself like a mummy um, those, those would be, those would be exercises you get a lot of value. Um, I've had some friends, uh, recommend some, uh, dumbbell variations, uh, with, uh, pardon me, deadlift variations with the kettlebell that, that are kind of interesting to look at, uh, you know, uh, this suitcase deadlift and things like that. But almost universally with kettlebells, you're going to start to slide over into the conditioning side. And it's just because you just don't have enough load. So what your training program would look like would be, uh, well, it's not, it's, not, it's not terrible, but um, I have a little program called the Armor Armor Building Complex. That's kind of how it looks. So, you know, two cleans, one press, three front squats, um, high reps of, well, high reps uh, with a double kettlebell front squat can be illuminating. Um, so, yeah, that's, yeah. But again, these are always tough questions because, you're kind of pushing me into an either or kind of thing and that's just real hard to do uh vaguely in this kind of setting 
I know if we were at a bar or at a gym and we could kind of riff back and forth, uh, we could get a lot more in depth. And that's why it's so important to go to workshops. And it's so important to go to gyms. And it's so important to stay in dialogue with other people. Gosh, I hope I helped, Andrew. Thank you. We have a question from Jake. Jake from State Fork. My question is actually for my father. Oh, your father, huh? The old asking for a friend, huh? He is not really into working out much uh, to speak of, but got really into skiing. Yeah, good. We're going skiing again for the first time in 10 years. That's kind of cool. He's now 60 years old, a mere child, and was expressing interest in strength training to try to prevent injury, which I think is a really, really good idea. I had some ideas, but two factors make me pause. One, we are leaving in less than two months. Okay, I would argue you have time. Uh, you know, the mobility changes when you do things like goblet squat, kettlebell front squats, uh, or overhead squats, the squat, 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 squat family uh, would happen very quickly. The, the opening of the joints, that would happen very quickly. Um, you would get some... Uh, I'm, as a skier, I'm thinking more of the squat family at the top of my head. Uh, I wouldn't, like, if you could teach a rack deadlift for the hinge, something that simple, trap bar deadlift, um, you would see you would see boons and changes very quickly. Uh, I would think that doing rows and, I would especially think that doing vertical press and horizontal rows would be good just for the shoulders, from the, Injuries I've seen skiing outside those big, you know, knee and well, when I was young it was broken ankles and then they changed the technology. So now the energy goes up into the knee. So now you have to worry about a broken ankle. You just have to worry about a blown out knee, which I mean, I don't know about you, but in my experience, bones heal faster than knees. Um, uh, but after the knees, it seems that the, the shoulders are a big area. Uh, uh, any kind of work you can get him to do where he, where it's kind of almost opposite of what he would do with the ski point. Because uh, it's always going to carry around. Um, you know, a couple of weeks of vertical press, horizontal row, followed by the horizontal press, which would be the bench press or push-up family, and then the pull-up. Boy, that would be magical if you go three and three. That was just That was just me talking. And then number two, he has a bad back from an old injury. L3, 4, and 5 have already been fused with more in the future. Yoach. Any ideas to how to get him a little bit more bulletproof before we head to the mountains? Uh, this might be a great... Uh, uh, a lot of my listeners might be a little surprised, but this is why you have machines. You only Okay, the upside of machines. If you only have six to eight weeks, nothing will do more for hypertrophy, uh, general... Well, that weird strength you get from machines. And, of course, the learning uh, curve is almost zero. And in this case, you're, there's not going to be too many machines. I've seen some leg press machines that probably would probably put them back in a bad place because of the push. You see you're pushing your feet like this, and the wedge of the, the back is just getting wedged. I mean, I, I think that could be rough on a back. But I think... This might be a good time to go to a, a facility that has machines, you know, uh, leg curl, leg extension, uh, hell, the in and outy machines, uh, uh, a leg press variation that doesn't hurt, um, vertical push, vertical pull, horizontal push, horizontal pull, some kind of other thing, you know, gosh, you get them to do, I, I would suggest the, the, the art of any hierarchical training. I mean, three sets of eight is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But the idea of going, you do a slow set of 15, you add weight, you go a little faster for eight, and then you add weight again and you grind out three, four, five reps as hard as you can. Done. Move on. Uh, when I was trained at the gym over here with after my uh, uh, total hip replacement, uh, that's the first uh, program I did. Uh, I would train here and do my mobility work. Uh, I would do my supported uh, squats and I would do uh, loaded carries and then two days a week I would go off and just become a <laughs> I don't know what is a 1970s early 1980s bodybuilder and just you know do that uh, hierarchical workout so it goes slow medium fast and when you're trying to go fast that's with the heaviest weight and the nice thing about that is he can also go by feel on that workout uh, then if the 
set of 15 is too light, he'll know. He'll be like, okay, that's too light. If the set of 15, the first set is too heavy, you know, again, he'll know. And then so when you jump up a plate, you know, instead of jumping up 10 plates, you know, you or with the select the right key, you know, whatever they do that. Instead of jumping up like this, you would jump up like this, you know. And there, there's your idea. So um, as I review the whole question, <clears throat> I think anything you do is always better than nothing. So try try the idea with machines, okay? Thank you, Jake. We have a question from Mike, and this is an interesting question because I feel like these kind of questions, I, I don't know if I should answer. After herniating a disc, doing back squats, low bar, rehab took me around a year. Okay, so A, this is going to be medical advice because you have a herniated disc. B, you're doing low bar squats, which I don't think have any value. Of course, I, I coach mostly athletes. I coach athletes, I, I coach people who are in collision occupations, and then I coach general population. In the group I work with, the low bar squat has no value. Now, you could say, well, don't you with power, you know, uh, if you're a power lifter. Well, good. If you're a power lifter, you do that. That's your sport. I mean, I don't recommend, uh, you know, cleaning jerks for everybody, but I do them because, you know, that's my sport. Uh, I've lost confidence to go back to back squats. Well, okay. This combined with sh poor shoulder mobility after breaking my collarbone. So you got a bad back and a broken collarbone. I really struggle getting much on the bar, and that's fine. I never really felt comfortable doing them, and maybe because my thighs are incredibly long. Yeah, and I think, in, if you listen to my work, you know, I think there are people who are born to squat, and I think there are people who are born to hinge. I think there are per people born to push, huh? And people born to pull, not me. And uh, in my case, I'm a push hinger. And so, yeah, I think there's some truth to that. Anyhow, I would like to start front squatting. However, I have a fused wrist. Okay, Mike, uh, herniated disc, broken collarbone, fused wrist. And now, now, now you ask me. Why didn't you ask me before all this? So it's incredibly difficult and painful to hold the bar in the correct position. Is there any better options that I can practice? I goblet squat now, but my dumbbells only go to 40 kilo, so not heavy enough for me to make good progress. Well, Mike, what the hell? So 40 kilos isn't enough for the great Mike, but let's be honest, Mike. Uh, <laughs> the important thing is the movement of squatting, not the load, for most people. Again, unless you're a power or well, even Olympic lifters, I would say, for most of them, uh, I, it was a great the discovery I made in my life when I stopped trying to push my front squat up, and I and I got my clean and jerk technique better. I lifted more on the platform. I didn't look as good in the gym, but I did more on the platform. Um, you know, I, I I'm going to tell you to stick with goblet squats. Now, this is you know, ask somebody else in the in the field, and they'll. Well, the person, you know, a lot of people just call you bad names and you're not tough enough and use offensive terms that really should have been stopped being used a million years ago. But, Mike, you, you didn't tell me your age or anything, but you have three injuries that are stopping you from doing certain things. Uh, I mean, if you spend a year, three days a week doing goblet squats, you know, getting your reps up, doing some of my things like the six-minute test, uh, six-minute test, uh, you set a, uh, it works, well, I have a, on my phone, it's, it's over there, sorry, uh, I use Seconds Pro, and I just program it, it's so it beeps every 30 seconds, and we start with a beep, 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 boop, you do a front squat, uh, pardon me, a gobble squat, and then you sit back down for 30 seconds, and at 30 seconds, beep, you stand up, sit back down for another 30 seconds, beep. Stand up, sit back down for another 30 seconds, and you do that for six minutes. Uh, if you can do that with the 80 kilo bell, then I would argue you're ready to go on. Why don't you try that first? You know, try try a test for two minutes, um, and and then maybe a couple weeks from now, try the three minute test with this 40 kilo bell, and then when you get to the six minute test, uh, then I want you to email. Then I want you to get back to me, and then we'll we'll move from there. Okay, I can almost bet that why you're doing the six minute test and uh, three days a week of goblet squats, uh, keep the reps 15 to 25 every workout uh, on maybe one day, one day a month do a set of 25 with one lightweight and 
most of the time do three sets of eight or something like that you know but nothing crazy and just just you know get yourself in good shape good conditioning good movement and see if that helps bring things around and i'd love to get you to be able to do front squats um the other thing i'd like you to think about <clears throat> go look at my videos on how i teach the overhead squat and let's see if we can get you to overhead squat also okay and if you overhead squat then well all your dreams come true thank you mike and I, please uh next time you email me no more injuries okay thank you Bye bye we had a question from adam boy adam he's been around it seems a long time i acquired a barbell set in march good for you Previously, I'd done kettlebell and bodyweight training. Since starting the barbell work, I have done a 5x5 five five program twice a week and have been pleased. After listening to your show, I became interested in learning the Olympic lifts and I have a neighbor who is a former college athlete and coach who agreed to teach me. I came across two articles you have written containing Olympic lifting programs. One is a beginner's program and the other is a two-day-a-week program. Yeah, I have a lot more than that. I mean, I have dozens of Olympic lifting programs, but... Those are the two you found. Currently, I train twice a week for an hour or a little more. Yeah, and that's, for the most of the people I work with, an hour of Olympic lifting is plenty. Um, uh, in my own case here, Adam, um, I, God, I just keep trying to not say Adam and Eve jokes, so just forgive me. Um, I, you know, I do a half an hour of serious uh, Olympic lifting with a timer on. And then I do some general um, uh, hypertrophy work, and then I go for a walk. If I was to do an hour of just the Olympic lifting, man, I don't know if I could lift three days a week because I just get so oh, tired. Um, currently, I train twice a week for an hour and a little more. I work a very physical job and find I feel the best when I lift twice a week as opposed to higher frequency. Yeah, and that's why so many of my programs are like for... I have a whole bunch of programs called like for the busy guy or the busy person and stuff like that. And almost universally, I recommend two days a week. Uh, if you want to compete, then I recommend, I recommend that you have a, a Saturday workout, a Sunday workout, and then Wednesday you come in and do one exercise. Um, like just one exercise. Like if you want an Olympic lift, it'd be front squats, or overhead squats. So Saturday, sorry, and I'm riffing here just a little bit, but just a Saturday could be the power day or let's... Let's we'll, we'll flip that. So on Saturday, we'll ha I would have you snatch, clean and jerk, front squat, maybe farm or walk. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Sunday, power snatch, power clean, push jerk, back squat, and then maybe sled pull. Wednesday, either front squat or overhead squat. You know, nothing crazy, and just to, just so you don't lose that mobility um, with that long break. And there we go. Also, started a business on the side, of course. We all do this. Uh, family ob obligations and church involvement results in limited train time. Due to this, I train Monday and Thursday morning. My question, would you recommend doing the beginner program twice a week, the two-day program, or possibly something else for an Olympic lifting beginner? Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what you pick. The thing I would tell you, Adam, is that... Uh, uh, you got to snatch and clean and jerk on those two workouts. You probably want a front squat. Uh, but be smart about this. If time is a real problem, you can go. A program we used to use, boy, it was good. I used this Utah, Utah State in my throwers. You walk in, you put weight on the bar, and you do power snatch followed by uh, overhead squat. So power snatch, overhead squat, and you, you build the weight up. And then you slide over to squat snatch, okay? When the squat get, snatch gets to a load that's, you know, sort of like, huh, okay, that's heavy. Then you just stay with that last weight, and then you power clean it, push jerk it. And then you add a little bit more load, maybe two, three sets of every single. So three, four jumps in the power snatch over a squat. Three, four jumps in the squat snatch three, four uh, jumps in the uh, power clean push jerk, three, four singles in the clean and jerk, and then add either at your last clean and jerk weight or just a tiny bit more, like two sets of two in the front squat. Uh, do a sled pull, a prowler, uh, go
go for a nice walk. And that's a good little two-day week program for you. Uh, is it perfect? Well, no, but nothing's perfect, so don't worry about it, okay? And Adam, um, you kind of inspired me here, and I, I, I hope other listeners uh, try this program too. Because as I recall, it worked really, really well. I mean, because and you're adding weight almost every single set to the bar, um, which makes it nice. Uh, I mean, if you're doing the power snatch, let's just say it's 135, uh, 60 kilos. So you do 60 kilos, you add weight. 62 kilos 64 kilos 66 i mean you just keep you just keep adding weight after every set and you just keep bouncing up and if you start to get shaky you just move to a more efficient exercise so i hope that helps thank you and good luck to you let me know how this goes okay thanks we have a question from jay i'm in a situation where in the upcoming months i'll need to alternate staying two weeks at a relative's house where i could pay for a gym access then living two weeks at another relative's place where I could use some kettlebells and a pull-up bar. Hmm. My goal is to become overall stronger and develop some aerobic base, something like three miles in 21 minutes, which is solid, yeah. I am no athlete, but I'm thinking about getting involved in voluntary, voluntary firefighting in the coming years. I'm 33. Do you have any suggested uh, suggestions for how I could structure training in two-week blocks? Well, you know, if you're at a gym, I mean, uh, I gave some advice earlier about, especially if it's a gym with a lot of machines, boy, I got to tell you, and this will sound crazy to a lot of people who listen to my work for a long time, but, you know, if you decided to do that general go to the gym workout where you did, um, you know, I mentioned earlier the hierarchical training where you do, you, you get on a machine, leg curl, you do a very light, slow set with 15, this is Art Devaney's idea, you add more load, you do a little bit faster set with eight, you instantly add more load, and then you try to grind out real hard and fast four or five reps. Man, you can feel the lactic acid just leap. But if you could, I mean, just go to every single machine and do that little thing. And uh, the gym we have over here, I don't know, I mean, they have, so it would be leg curl, leg extension, leg press, any and outy, there's a curl machine. There's a, a an interesting little back machine. Uh, horizontal press, uh, horizontal pull, vertical press, vertical pull, uh, uh, triceps and biceps. And that's not bad. You know, that's not a bad little workout. And you would get a nice little bang of hypertrophy. The two weeks that you have the uh, kettlebells and pull-up bar, you know, get yourself into doing something like the humane burpee workout, which is swings, goblet squats, push-ups. Uh, get yourself hanging from the bar. So two weeks of you know nineteen early nineteen eighties bodybuilding, uh, two weeks of two thousand and five kettlebell stuff. You know where you do a lot of swings and you do a lot of presses and you you play with the bells and um, I don't know you could even do something let's see uh, ten days you could probably easy knock out uh, two to three to four maybe more. Yeah, five. You could do five thousand. You could do five thousand swings in two weeks. You could do that. But if you were to do the, I don't know. Let's just stick with that five thousand. Five thousand swings in those two weeks. So you do five hundred a day, and you you toss in push ups, and you toss in pull ups, and you toss in goblet squats. When you got back to those two weeks, you would be like, huh, that two weeks of hypertrophy. You you would just be changing things up. This might really work better than a lot of the nonsense I actually normally have people do so try that jay just an idea but uh uh remember no matter what situation you're in you can do something okay thank you we have a question from dante well this feels like this might this question might start an inferno <laughs> what are your thoughts on jumping rope i'm not a big fan god i love it when people ask me questions about stuff i don't like yeah because then i get a thousand comments in the bottom I said something about uh, clubs and maces, and I don't, I don't like them at all. And by God, even in my talk, I told people there's gonna be about 80 people responding. Well, I use them every day, and that's great. You can use them every day you want. And members of my family have died for your right to do that. Uh, I know that many old school boxers jump rope, and that's true. I think about incorporating the jump rope into my exercise routine for extra cardio. Yeah, it's a. I mean, it is great. I mean, I actually. Uh, I actually 
learn from one of the best jump ropers in the world, these speed jump ropers, that they use like this. The steel jump ropes that come from airplane parts and they have ball bearings in the handles that are like super duper. and Yeah, it's pretty cool. I still suck. I am a 36-year-old male weighing 153. I am trained to stay in shape for surfing and I live in Hawaii. Well, I'd go surfing if I were you on the beaches, but what do I know? I have been weightlifting, uh, weight training with kettlebells for almost two years now. That's great. And they have helped me tremendously. That's good to hear. My strength training consists primarily of swings, get-ups, overhead press, and pull-ups, which are just dynamite. These exercises all give me that what-the-heck effect. In your book, Easy Strength, you, ref you reference James, uh, Jesse James' old wrestling book, uh, and he recommended something like this. He did, yeah. Three days of weight training, three days of cardio and flexibility days. Uh, I was thinking about incorporating some jump rope for extra cardio on days when I do not surf or weight train. Yeah, that would make sense with me. Uh, you don't really, you're not very clear. At least I, I missed it maybe. But if you're doing swings, get up, overhead press, and pull ups three days a week, I'm hoping you're swimming five to seven days a week. Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's nothing wrong with the extra jump roping. And I, I don't know if sore calves will impact surfing. Or I, I just don't know. But, uh, yeah, I think it's a great idea. I, I, I got nothing against it, uh, especially if you like it. Now, if you don't like it, for God's sakes, don't do it. If you start jump roping, you're like, I hate this. Basically, like what I thought. Don't do it, because the last thing you want to do is do something you don't like in your training if you're not a professional, because it just it'll just drive you away, and that's not what we want. I hope that helps. And uh, Dante, next time I'm in Hawaii, why don't you come uh, hang out with me? I I, I, I spend time at, at, a, at a base um, in Hawaii. So, yeah, we'll talk. Thank you. We have a question from Matt. Do you have any program recommendations that develop the double kettlebell movements? Jerk, double snatch, etc. Okay, I don't, I don't, I'm not a big fan of double snatch. So, I'm not a, I'd, I'd rather you not do them. The best way uh, I've done the double kettlebell, and I've, in fact, I just got uh, Karis, one of my RKC2 students, uh, she lives over in Denver. We were talking about this. She she took the RKC2, and she she noted, um, she's a great trainer out there in Denver. Denver's got some of the best trainers I know. Josh Hillis, uh, Ann Reese, uh, uh, my friend Ann. Um, uh, Josh Hillis, I mean, it is a great place for trainers, man. I don't know why I don't go there more often, but uh, what I had them do with the double kettlebell jerk was every 20 seconds, and I, I set my 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 uh, phone to work on this. Um, you did a double clean, double jerk, weight down, rest. 20 seconds later, beep beep beep, double clean, double jerk, rest, and I think. And they, I had them go a long time, Matt. I mean, I don't think it was dangerous, but they had their snatch, uh, snatch weight bells, and they are RKC two students, so you know you expect a little bit more. Uh, we went for twenty minutes, man. So that's a long time to do that kind of thing, and it was cool because you know um, if you look at the work uh, Rusty Moore does with lightning rounds, uh, I was seeing the same the same things going on you know so you don't ever really get you don't ever get that tired or that fatigued but it, everything just starts to accumulate like you're out of breath from three or four minutes ago but you know you're you know and that just keeps you accumulate more out of breathness you accumulate you accumulate and it's interesting so that's my favorite way to do it um after i brilliantly invented it uh, uh out of new york I've been utilizing it and recommending it for a whole bunch of people. So anytime I would do double kettlebell clean and press, uh, double kettlebell uh, clean and jerk, the, even the push press, this is just an idea. Um, your, your mileage may vary. You might have to go 30 seconds. I have a program I'm doing now where every 35 seconds the, the buzzer goes off, but I'm doing three to five reps, so it's a little different. But man... Try that idea. Try 25s the first time, 25 seconds, and then slide it when you can to 20. I think I think you'll like it. Yeah, good question, Matt. I hope that helps. Yeah, and I don't like the double kettlebell snatch. I, I just don't trust it. 
Okay. Well, listen. Hey, there we go. Uh, episode 121 is now behind us. Remember, if you have questions, uh, email them to me at podcast at danjohnuniversity.com. And as I always say, I will do my best to answer them. Um, I, a while ago, stopped worrying about redundant questions. Let me say that again. I stopped worrying about redundant questions. Okay. Um, but so I'm happy to answer them. You know, I am because I, I get it. Sometimes, sometimes people, it's just really hard to find. Um, <laughs> I have over 2,000 videos. I'm sneaking up on three now, I guess, on YouTube. And I can, it's going to be hard to find them all. So, well, there you go. And uh, hey, you know, until next time, let's all keep on lifting and learning. Thank you. Bye-bye.